Hi, this is Marika. Hello or good evening, this is Tarako. This time I would like to share with everyone the top three samurais who were extremely powerful. Now it's time for the real life samurais to make their appearance. Still, it's terrible that you asked me to narrow it down to three people. It took me all night to choose. Thank you for your hard work. So that's why you didn't show up for breakfast. I didn't think a little delay would make me skip breakfast. Well, let's get back on track. This is the top three samurai who were extremely strong and plus one. Okay, I get it. So let's start with number three this time. The samurai I'm about to introduce are men who were strong in actual battle. Just like in modern sports, there are men who are strong in practice and men who are strong in actual battle. Itusai was exactly the type of man who was strong in actual battle. So in short, he's a genius. When he defeated a dojo master in his first fight, he had not yet trained with a sword. Itusai's weapons were his beastly physical strength and his fierce temper. When did he start? There are many theories, but the most popular is that he was born on Izu Oshima in 1550. At the age of 14, he escaped from Oshima and swam about 113 kilometers across the ocean to the mainland. A truly astonishing feat of physical prowess. How many hours has he been swimming? He's a monster. While working as a bouncer at Mishima Shrine, Itusai fought off bandit after bandit. One time, he was attacked by more than a dozen bandits, but he quickly defeated seven of them and cut off one of the bandits who was hiding behind a big jar with a single blow to the jar. Itusai then went to Edo in search of a strong samurai. This was the first time he trained as a sword fighter. He only had to practice for five years in that dojo before he could beat his master. He must have been a master swordsman in a previous life. Maybe he did. It is said that Itusai fought 33 duels throughout his life, slaying 57 men with a serious sword and 62 men with a wooden sword, and was undefeated throughout his life. Itusai's greatest achievement is that the school he founded, Ituryu, has spawned many great swordsmen in its wake. However, Itusai was more interested in dueling than in spreading his style. A free spirit, Itusai eventually disappeared, leaving his school to his disciples. He looks a little like your dad. What's the similarity? Musashi Miyamoto. You may have heard of him before. Many Japanese will first think of this man when they hear the words, Master of the Sword. I guess you're right. Even I, who's not much of a historian, do so. Musashi was born in 1584 in Harima Province, now southwestern Hyogo Prefecture. It is said that he was adopted at an early age by a master swordsman named Shinmen Muji. As you can see, Musashi uses two swords. At the age of 13, Musashi began serious training in swordsmanship. Musashi had frequent fights with his adoptive father and finally ran away from home. While participating in the Kasen, Musashi fought many duels and made a name for himself. He won his first duel at the age of 13 and fought more than 60 duels until he turned 30, winning all of them. Aiji Yoshikawa's novel Musashi Miyamoto, which was very popular in the 1930 ESS, depicted Musashi's life and career in a brilliant way and made him the most famous swordsman in Japan. It's a novel, so there's probably a lot of fiction in it. That's right. But the most famous duel, Ganryujima no Tatakai, is true. Iori Miyamoto, Musashi's adopted son, inscribed the story on a stone monument he built. However, it is a fiction that the opponent was Kojiru Sasaki, a master swordsman. His opponent was an unknown man named Ganryu. I think it was the duel with the Yoshioka clan described in the novel that made the strongest impression on the Japanese people. Musashi, who was 21 years old, first knocked down Yoshioka Seijuro, the master of Yoshioka Dojo. The men of the Yoshioka Dojo, who had been disgraced by the defeat of the Dojo master, called on Musashi. Musashi took them by surprise and single-handedly wiped out dozens, even hundreds of Yoshioka's followers. In this duel, which was later made into a movie, Musashi cut down many samurai one after another, making him the greatest swordsman in Japan. Did that really happen? There are many historical facts about this duel, so it is true that it took place. But the fact that he survived alone against hundreds of fighters? Well, I don't think so. He wrote Gorinosho in his later years, which is quite famous. Oh, I've heard that before. It is composed of five volumes, Earth, Water, Fire, Wind, and Air, 
and is mainly about the art of using two swords and fighting. But it is not only about swordsmanship and military techniques, but also about how to relate to others, how to control oneself, when to act, how to handle tools, and so on. It's also applicable today, and that's why it's so popular. I guess there's something about people who have mastered something that enlightens them about life. Now before we go to number one, I would like to introduce to everyone an extra chapter, Nobutsuna Kamizumi. Why didn't I include him in the top three? Because I don't know how strong he is in actual battles with his life on the line. Nobutsuna was born around 1508 as the second son of a castle lord in what is now Gunma Prefecture. He was later invited to Kyoto, where he was highly praised by the Muromachi Shogun Yoshiteru Ashikaga. He fought before the emperor, received a high official rank, and was called the greatest swordsman in Japan. He was undoubtedly the greatest swordsman in Japanese history, but there are few records of his actual battles. This is probably because Nobutsuna, born the son of a lord of a castle and running on an elite road, never had the opportunity to fight with others to make a name for himself. I see. That's why it's an extra chapter. Dad doesn't like elitists, do you? If I didn't like him, I wouldn't have introduced him. For example, if he fought Musashi, there is a possibility that Nobutsuna would be stronger than Musashi. That's why I introduced him in the extra chapter. So that's what this is about. His family was a master swordsman, and the dojo where he grew up was filled with skilled swordsmen from all over the country. Nobutsuna was trained as a gifted fencer from an early age, and he reached the level of a master in his early 20s. Rather than training his body, he continued to study swordsmanship academically. He did not rely on the sword but on his own mind over the enemy's mind. By doing so, he subdues his opponents. I have no idea what you're talking about. Marika, have you ever heard of this man? Bokuden? That's a funny name. I've never heard of it. Even your name might sound strange if the old Japanese heard it. You're right. Even for a Japanese, the name Tarako sounds... Now let's talk about why Bokuden is number one. It's because of his strength in actual battle. Let's go step by step. Bokuden was born in 1489 as the second son of a priest of the Kashima Shrine in present-day Ibaraki Prefecture. His family was trained in the art of swordsmanship, and Bokuden learned swordsmanship from his father from an early age. Later, Bokuden was adopted by the Tsukahara family, also a famous swordsmanship family, and mastered their style as well. Having mastered two styles of swordsmanship, Bokuden set out on his Mushashugyo journey at the age of 17. He was an elite sword fighter, and then he went to Mushashugyo. He chose a different path than Nobutsuna. Yes, that's right. Bokuden has traveled all over Japan three times in his life to do Mushashugyo. Mushashugyo means to go out and fight with strong samurai to improve one's swordsmanship. All of the samurai I have introduced so far have done this, except for Nobutsuna. Bokuden was born in a time when the power of the Muromachi shogunate was weakening and the world was in turmoil. While training as a warrior, Bokuden participated in many kasen. Unlike other swordsmen, there are historical facts that show his strength on the battlefield. I see. What was he like? He went to kasen 37 times and crossed swords with the enemy 22 of those times, winning all of them. It is said that he cut off 12 heads of Bushu and 16 heads of the famous Bushi, and in total, he slayed 212 men. During that time, he only received six grazes from arrows. Bokuden is more of a god of war than a master swordsman. However, it seems that Bokuden's mind became ill from killing so many people and seeing so many terrible sights. He spent 1,000 days in the Kashima Shrine, where he opened his eyes to Ichinotachi. It is the ultimate art of becoming one with the sword, with neither self nor opponent, but only with no mind. At the same time, it also meant to put everything into the first blow. Isn't that obvious? It means to use only the first blow. The second or third attack is not necessary. That's what Bokuden is. That's a kind of desperation attack. At the same time, Bokuden was very realistic. He studied his opponent before he fought and changed his fighting style accordingly. Not only did he master his own swordsmanship, but he also tried to know his opponent well enough to win. Until his death at the age of 83, he spent 39 years of his life in Mushashugyo. 
That's why he had so many disciples and had such an impact on the samurai community. Bokuden, a strange name, but a fearsome man. Don't be so easy to call him Bokuden, Bokuden. That's all I have to say. I know I've rambled a lot, but I hope everyone enjoyed it. In the long history of the samurai, there must have been many strong samurai. If they lived in the same era, they must have been terrifying. Speaking of terrifying, our next video will be the top four truly terrifying assassins. Top four? I can't sleep tonight because I'm trying to narrow down the list again. Don't worry, I already have the next four names. Why? Did you pick them? See you next time. Thank, Thank you, you for, for watching. watching.